DJ Valentino here with Kevin from Knuckle Puck. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. So now we're going to start off full steam ahead. I got to ask, the album 2020 has been out for about a week now. How do you feel? I feel good, man. Uh, it's like a little, a little bit different than any other album we put out just because uh, usually we're on tour right now or about to go on tour uh, to promote the album. But um, it feels good, I guess, just knowing that a lot of these songs are finally out there as a whole and not just as singles, you know? Um, so yeah, feels pretty good. And you guys, I know in 2019, when you were touring, you sold merch that said Knuckle Puck, tw new album 2020. So I'm sure yeah. you guys have been sitting on this music for a very, very long time. Yeah, yeah, I was actually, I was just thinking about that the other day. I forgot we had a, a tote bag that said that because uh, we, uh, I, and I think that was way back when we didn't even know it was gonna be called 2020 yet. So it's kind of funny that it just worked out that way. But uh, yeah, we've been writing it for like two years. I mean, we started writing it like August of 2018. Mm. So yeah, it's been in the works for like a while. So when the pandemic first started in like March, at that point, was the album all done or did you still have certain songs you had to finish and complete? It was completely done. Uh, we... Sorry, I'm outside right now, uh, but uh, <laughs> no you can probably hear the airplane. But um, we we started recording like late November of 2019, and then uh, we had like the holidays to work around a little bit, so we had a little bit of time off throughout. But we finished like I want to say like the first week of January of 2020, and it was done, mixed, mastered, artwork was done. Uh, by the time March hit and we were on tour in March and so um, tour got canceled we headed home and like yeah so like everything's been done for like a while like it was supposed to come out in like late May so mm -hmm. it was all ready to go for that and so yeah we've just been sitting on it for like an additional three four months you know and I know in um, previous interviews you guys have spoken about how the reason this album was supposed to come out in summer was because it has a very summertime vibe to it. And I totally understand it and feel that. How do you think that release being in September, fans have gravitated towards it? Um, you know, I think like time of the year, it's not really as, uh, it's not really as like pertinent, I guess. It, 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 Cause like everyone understands the circumstances. Um, but uh, I still think it's received as well. And, you know, despite summer kind of officially being over now, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really affect the perception, I guess. But uh, it's funny, we were like, we just knew like, okay, we'll record like late 2019. And uh, so it'll probably come out like early summer. And so we were fully anticipating that and kind of writing songs to premeditate that. Mm -hmm. And we never, I don't think we've ever really done that, like considered the time of year it's coming out and putting emphasis on that. And it's funny the first time we do that, like it doesn't happen, but you know, uh, not much you can do. But yeah, I still think the perception is still the way we intended it to be. So we all feel good about that. Exactly. And like every review and every even just comment, like when I'm scrolling through like Instagram or Twitter, all the people that have listened to the album, I've heard nothing but positive reviews and things about the record. So I think it's getting received very, very well. I agree. How was it though, like from your mind space, watching that initial release date at the end of May and then, you know, having that pass you by, you know, I'm sure that like around May until you guys like announced it and um, I believe it was early June, that must have been kind of a weird emotional thing for the band yeah uh like i i can say at least for me it didn't really feel like anything too substantial because by the time like may hit like we were already like so in the thick of it in terms of quarantine and everything mm -hmm. so everything was already not feeling normal so like just knowing that it wouldn't come out till september it's like well i mean kind of like what are you gonna do like might as well just accept it for what it is um yeah I don't think it, like it really I it probably made us all more antsy because we again premeditated for it to be out like in May but um I mean there's 
there's nothing you could really do about it. And so I think we all just kind of relaxed into having no control over it and just kind of let it be, you know? And what I love that you guys did was a lot of bands kind of shied away from releasing music right when it first started. You know what I mean? In March and April, when mm -hmm. all was going down, a lot of bands were very hesitant. And you guys, you know, you released Tune Me Out, RSVP, you know, Earthquake, all these singles in the middle of quarantine. So even though you guys didn't have the album out, you still gave content to the fans. What kind of went yeah. on in that decision? Again, we were just like, like, we're like, dude, people are just like at home and like, there's nothing to do. Might as well just give them something to listen to. We were just on tour right up until quarantine, until tour got canceled. And we were playing Tune You Out and Breathe. And a lot of kids were just asking like, okay, you put Tune You Out out. So what about Breathe? Like we want to hear Breathe really badly. And so we were like, okay, like people are still paying attention um, to the fact that we're releasing new music. And so might as well give them what they want and do what we want and just put it out anyways um yeah it's like it, that was a that was a funny conversation to have like earlier in the year in like march and april like what do we do about the record because we're not there's no way we're torn on it mm -hmm. um so that was kind of a different obstacle to work around but at the end of the day we were like we still want to put it out so it kind of stinks that we can't tour around it but what are you gonna do might as well just have something out there and give people something to uh attach themselves to in the meantime exactly and i know that you guys did the album relief album release live stream show i thought that was a really yeah. cool and unique way to still have an album release and celebrate you know oh we made an awesome record it's finally out and have the fans mm. be a part of it even in these quarantine safe times yeah yeah that was that was also like for me best case scenario like it just kind of worked out perfectly like on the actual day the album comes out still playing like a, a show you know air quotes um yeah i mean like given the circumstances that's I, i'm thoroughly happy with that it's just it was cool to like be on a stage again playing you know technically physically to no one but uh it was just nice to like follow through with that ritual once again you know even if it was just for one day was it weird to like because you know i'm sure at a live show you feed off the crowd's energy the crowd feeds off your energy and it's this really cool yeah. cycle whereas i'm sure with a live show it's got to be weird to like just play in front of a camera you know yeah yeah it's funny they were like they were like okay we'll say action and then like wait like 10 seconds and then like you guys start playing and so when we start they said action and we started playing it was it was weird like we just started playing and it kind of felt like a sound check like a documented sound check but um it, like i still i still got like sort of like nervous because like in the same way when a set first starts and there's actual people there but uh like it was kind of difficult at first to wrap your head around like oh people are watching but we just don't know that yet uh like it doesn't really feel that because there's no eyes on you um but uh it still like in a way felt the same like it still felt like a show which was great i thought it was going to feel like much more isolated but uh i still kind of probably because it's been so long like i'd still kind of got like that same like rush of energy and feeling and you're right, it's like the emotions were still there. It was still a positive experience. And it felt like playing a show, even if it wasn't like a full. Show. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So another thing I definitely want to ask about in regards to the new record, the guitar work in this is absolutely stellar. It's catchy, it's, Thanks. it's super like, you know, on the, the, the guitar rhythms on RSVP and Green Eyes. What went into the writing process of these guitar tones and how you chose the guitar patterns you chose? um i think you know i'll say like with especially with the song like green eyes we referred constantly on this record back to third eye blind as we do with every record but that's a very very massive influence on our band and i think whether we knew it or not we were like kind of drawn a lot of influence especially guitar wise from third eye blind they just have really cool like strumming patterns and rhythms where they kind of get in your head and 
uh, maybe they're a little hypnotic at times, but in a positive and good way. And I think we were subconsciously trying to emulate something like that, you know, like, uh, I, I have to, Nick is really, he's really good with like, uh, like rhythm and strumming patterns and he's very consistent and very creative when it comes to that. Uh, so I have to say a lot of that extended from him. Mm. And that's kind of how like the tone and, and the vibe of the, the album came to be. Yeah. Yeah. Tone was, we like, I mean, just like every record, we just AB a lot of tones in the studio and um, we used a lot of JCM 2000s, which are the amps that Nick and I play and uh, JCM 800s as well. And we mostly recorded a lot of the guitar tones through like 212 cabs, I think, and maybe 412s here and there too. But uh, yeah, we just like wanted a really like tight and punchy tone. And I think that's what we got. Yeah. And now I, I'm sure you're getting a lot of questions about this, but I have to ask anyway, because I think it's the coolest thing ever. Knuckle Puck is dropping a actual guitar pedal as merchandise mm -hmm. like for the album. What went yeah. into that decision? And also kind of like a two part to this question. It sounds exactly like the album tone. How do yeah. you guys capture that so perfectly? Um, Nick, I remember one day in the studio, Nick was like, oh, I have I had this idea like it would be my my cousin like is like an engineer of sorts and we him and I were just like talking about guitars and pedals and stuff and Nick was like I think it'd be cool if we made a guitar pedal for one of the pre-order items and at the time it kind of sounded like an outlandish idea I was just like I don't even know what goes into that like or how we're gonna do that but uh that was really like Nick's like labor of love he really put in the time and effort to make that happen and uh yeah we i mean we we actually both used them at the live stream show so that's like how they sound and um they sound really really good uh i kind of really dig them a lot and uh um so yeah that was like nick's like that was like totally nick's idea and he like like I said, just like really took the time to make sure it sounded right and uh, paid close attention to the kinds of tones we were getting on 2020 and uh, try to emulate that in a pedal. And uh, I think it came out great and it's pretty spot on. And I think what I love most about it is at the end of the day, it promotes like a lot of the knuckle puck, I'm, I'm sure audience and, and, and listenership, you know, might dream to be rock stars one day or write music of their own. And mm -hmm. I feel like by having a pedal as like a merchandise item, you're promoting that creativity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that's like a, like a not really intended byproduct of that, but we're happy that it is a byproduct uh, all the same. Um, we, I remember we had like a lot of talks where like, we're like, I mean, I hope people are like into it because we've never like, you know, putting out like a, a t-shirt or a hoodie. It, that's one thing. Like everyone wears t-shirts and hoodies, but like not everyone plays guitar. Not everyone like uses a guitar, like this kind of overdrive pedal. Um, but it was kind of very like gratifying to see that there was a demand for it and people were responding super positively to it. And uh, it was doing so well. Like that's kind of, cool that uh, i don't know we could put something that's kind of put out something that's like not typical of a band like us to put out for like a pre-order item let alone like a merch item and people respond to it well so that kind of you know, just feels really good it's cool yeah yeah and, and another speaking while we're on the topic of merch rock sound offered this really cool uh, vinyl of 2020 but i had like mm -hmm. an exclusive different rock sound kind of cover did you guys have a ton of different album covers that you were deciding between when you went into this record or it was like it's the 20 we had like the 2020 cover but uh lupe bustos who took the the picture i i remember telling him like try it like this is like the 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 main idea we want which is what you see on the cover but i remember saying like try some different variations because you never know what we might like better what we could use for uh like an alternative cover like besides this and that um so that like the the thing with like the mirrors is basically that's like 
what we always wanted the cover to be something like that i don't think we really like strayed away too far from that if i can recall mm. now in terms of the album writing process i want to backtrack just a little bit um you obviously the name of the album is 2020 and you have the 2020 mm -hmm. title track is track one when at what point did you decide that that title track is going to be that first track is going to be the title track of the rest of the record like uh, when was that aha moment after after we were done recording we were still trying to come up with the track listing and i remember john and i wanted 2020 to be like like the second to last song or maybe the last song we wanted it to be like later on in the record because we really liked how the outro is just like really long and drawn out and uh joe is just kind of re repeating that that phrase and um but then joe and nick were like it would be cool if that started the record alternatively because it's like the very first thing you hear and kind of like kickstarts the whole energy and vibe of it um and i think that was definitely the right move uh mm -hmm. I know that was definitely the right move because uh, when I go back and listen to it now in sequence with everything else, it just kind of makes perfect sense that that's the first thing you hear right when you press play on 2020. And I think you guys especially are very, very good at having album openers that kind of like really either introduce you to the album or kind of set the scene, you know, in a copacetic, you've got wall to wall and, you mm -hmm. know, tape shifter, you've got nervous passenger. And then in the new yep. one, 2020, I think it's just a very perfect, this is what this album is going to be about. Yeah. Thank you. We, we try, we pay a lot of attention to sequencing, whether it's like a track list on an album or like a set list. And we try to, make sure that we're not being redundant or overstated or boring. And we always want to try to do something different and, uh, but have it also make sense in context. So we, we do pay a lot of probably like an annoying amount of attention to all of that, which is probably a good thing. Right? Yeah. I think it's, it's better to pay a lot of attention to it than not enough. So I sure. I agree. Yeah. So I got one last question for you. First of all, thank you so much again for talking with me today and for, yeah, for uh, sure. you know, exchanging ideas about the album. Uh, we're super excited to have you on. Um, <clears throat> my last question is what song off the new album are you most excited to play live in front of an audience? What song are you most looking forward to that you think is going to go the hardest live? Miles away for sure. Uh, we played that at the live stream show and I, I think it's definitely my favorite song of 2020. It's the last song. And um, I just I just thought it, it it's also just like a great live song as well. It just like really works. Um, sometimes you'll write a song and it's very good, but sometimes it just like it's time and place is best when it's recorded and when you're listening to it on headphones. Mm -hmm. And some songs just don't, uh, this is this is a very rare circumstance but some songs just don't like have that like spark when you play them live like sometimes it's just like this just isn't working for whatever reason but uh that's on miles away in particular when we played it live i was just like all right this like this one has that spark and that energy that i think it should have live um so i'm hoping when we can tour again that that will be in the set pretty consistently and permanently um so yeah i'm anticipating playing that song live a lot more that is so interesting to hear you say that because i know as a music fan there's some songs on the studio that i absolutely love and then when i see it live it doesn't always work and it's kind of interesting yeah. to hear you say that from the artist perspective as well yeah sometimes like sometimes you're like oh i don't know if this song like works live and then like you play it live and you kind of like gauge how the audience is receiving it as well you're like i just think all around this isn't really working so let's try to not force it you know so i think like the band knows the audience knows like everyone knows kind of a thing um yeah. but uh yeah so yeah it's interesting all right well again thank you so much for talking with me today 2020 available on all streaming platforms and on the knuckle puck merch store we, we really really appreciate it yeah thank you bell appreciate you having me